Let's talk about machine translation. So what does it mean? It has been defined as uh, the process when computer software translates the text from the source language into the target language without human intervention. So of course, it's a computer translating human language, basically, from one language into another, just to start with the definitions. So we have different commercial engines as uh, for machine translation. We have Google Translate, we have Microsoft Translator, um, we have Amazon Translate, DeepL, and Yandex. Now I want to ask you, um, what is the difference between these main engines? Are they all using neural systems? Are they still using statistical systems? Can you give us just an overview of these engines? Yeah, you, you listed the, the, the main, I would say, and it's funny because I, I use them all, basically. Uh, so I guess uh, at the moment they, are all, they all have their neural system. I knew that uh, Google and also Microsoft, they had these they still kept the statistical system as well, along with the newer one. So, but basically, they all use the, the newer system at the moment. And I can say for, for Italian, for instance, they all work really great. <laughs> so that's amazing. And it's also interesting to, to see that there are also outsiders of the industry, such as Amazon, uh, that have developed such engines and they work really great. I believe Amazon is one of the, our best choices when we are looking for a commercial engine. Um, now, I had another question, um, so related to, to, to Google, for example. So, I talk a lot with clients and they often tell me, is, are you using Google Translate? So, Google Translate has become the synonym of like really shitty translation. Sorry for the bad word. <laughs> um, so, why is this? Why are people still thinking that Google Translate is bad translation? And, and do you think that's going to change at some point? Is Google going to be considered? A good translation engine. Uh, you're, you are perfectly right. Google Translate is a synonym of bad translation, absolutely. And still, many customers are using Google. Uh, okay, are you using Google Translate? So, as a bad example of translation, I believe this is tied to the, the past, actually, because I can still see like posts from translators mainly uh, criticizing machine translation and posting some really bad example of translation from the machine, be it Google or Amazon, for instance. Uh, but it's something that comes from the past. Mm. Uh, I think Google works pretty good uh, at the moment. Uh, probably it's also a matter of privacy of data. That that's There's a bias uh, against Google for, for machine translation. Um, so now let's talk a little bit about the translation workflows that apply to websites. So now we just talked about machine translation overall. Let's talk about websites. So we have different processes um, for website translations when you are talking about machine translation or not. So we have machine translation only, so raw machine translation. We have machine translation post editing. We have translation and then there's also transcreation. Um, what I would like to know, Diego, is for, for the people who are not familiar with these processes, and we're going to be talking a lot about machine translation post-editing, um, can you tell us a little bit more about what that means compared to a basic translation editing proofreading sort of method? So what is machine translation post-editing? Yeah, of course. Well, uh, the easiest answer would be it's post-editing the raw output of machine translation. So basically, there's a human intervention on the target output of machine translation that needs to bring the quality of the final text to the quality expected by the customer. And this is very important because there are many different levels of customer expectations. So it really depends. The effort of the post editor depends on, on the quality expected by the customer. And we will see there are many different expectations based on the, the type of text the usage of the text and so on. Uh, we will see that later, I believe. Yes, of but Basically, this reviewing the, the target text and bringing it to, to a final quality desired by the customer. OK, so now we're talking about website translation, of course. So you have different types of contents. You have technical, you have user interfaces, uh, retail, you have customer support, you have blogs, legal text, of course, um, marketing text. You can also have educational text. For which of these use cases, if let's say we're assuming that the text is well written um, and that you're using a performing um, engine, uh, for which ones have you found that machine translation can perform well and that you can do post editing? 
well, let's let's start from the beginning. Technical, it works pretty good. Of course, the mode the engine is customized with the right terminology and the right corpus of translate past translations, of course. And so the, the very specific uh, vertical terminology, the better for the engine and for the output, mm -hmm. of course. Uh, UI user interface, it's I find it complicated because they are all like separate strings, and then maybe the same word can mean can be a command or a button. So it really depends on the context of the usage of that particular string, and that's difficult for the machine to guess. Yeah. Uh, retail is, I mean, it's a huge, huge industry. I, I can uh, already say that for e-commerce, uh, I found that machine translation is great. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then, so if we talk about support or um, blog, yes, yeah, support uh, meaning like uh, frequently asked questions or yeah, this kind of content. It's really great, and I think it, there's a huge space there uh, for using machine translation. And I think Microsoft was one of the first companies publishing their knowledge base uh, just with machine translation without even post editing. Mm -hmm. So it, it's been working perfectly fine even five or six or ten years ago. Let's talk a little bit about creative content. Um, right now we've talked about well, where machine translation sort of performs well, pretty well. Uh, but let's talk about where it doesn't perform so well, of course. Um, so we're talking about marketing content um, overall. So this is content that is meant to give you feelings, right, to make yep. you uh, you want to sell something, you want to make people feel like they want your product or that they want to interact with, with your services. Um, so why does the machine not perform so well for, for this content? I guess the reason is the same why some translators are better with technical content rather than marketing content or creative content. And it's really a matter of being able to, to transfer the message rather than the, the exact words. In the target mm -hmm. languages, so machine translation is not really good at giving you a completely different messages and was created message. So if you need to touch the same uh, emotional uh, chords of the target or the source language, it's it's really difficult for the machine to be able to do that. So now we're talking about twenty twenty one. Exciting. Um, <laughs> recently, I ran into um, the chart that Memsource published saying that machine translation post-editing uh, compared to translation editing, proofreading, or human translation has become um, the standard for, for their uh, tool. But what is your own um, like experience with clients um, adopting machine translation or asking you to do um, machine translation post-editing like in percentage? How much requests do you have of that? And how much do you know that is happening in the, for example, Italian language industry or worldwide language industry? In terms of my customers, they are asking more and more machine translation and post editing because they're starting starting to understand the value. And when I say they understand the value, is not the gain that they get, not the money that they save only. It's that they see that it can be used to translate faster. Uh, which is their main aim in many cases. Um, now we're talking about 2021 and clients who are starting to adapt and train machine translation extensively. So the first one is that um, machine translation has, let's be honest, opened new opportunities for clients who are unfamiliar with localization because it has raised, it has lowered, sorry, the price and the processes of um, translating your website. Uh, but that also means that they don't, they're not really familiar with traditional localization, so they are expecting um, machine translation post-editing at a lower rate, of course, than translation editing and proofreading. I can speak for, 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 for us uh, because we do have machine translation um, as a standard, like you can have it and then you can translate or then you can have someone post-edit. And usually we always get clients saying, I don't want translation, I want post-editing. Uh, so it's the main thing that clients ask for. They, they don't necessarily want a translation from zero. Um, so now it's time for uh, questions. And then, um, yeah, let me just change the slide because it's not the one for questions. Eh, that's the one. So I can start with the um, upvoted one. Uh, Estelle Bailly is asking, for retail as a customer, 
uh, wouldn't you be reluctant to type your credit card details on a page that is not 100% perfectly translated in your language? Well, um, that's the one I saw before, and it's very interesting. And the answer is not easy. I, I wouldn't uh, trust a website where the payment process is badly localized or the basic UI is badly localized. And I wouldn't ever buy from them.